How's everyone doing this evening? Um, this morning, actually. I believe you, brother. We have privileges. I am so grateful for the privileges that I have of being a servant of the Most High. Sorry, let me just make sure this is on. So, I have a handout. I will ask for someone to come forward and to pass them out. There you go. Thank you so much. Now, um, he will help you pass those out if you're able. I have another handout. We have some of these. These are, <clears throat> we printed these up. You'll see it has this, uh, it says here, God speaks. And on one side, it says, who's listening? And it's only Bible verses. Um, and this is uh, one of the tracks that we printed up. Um, and so, are you coming to pass out? Okay, there you go. So if you can just make sure everybody has one. If you want some, every Sabbath from now on, we're going to, um, we're going to be having a one Sabbath a month. We will be giving out or we will go out together and pass out tracks. One Sabbath each month. Uh-oh. We're going to go out together. But the other times, I'm, we'll have tracks, a special track that we're going to be working on for each Sabbath. As soon as that's ready. Oh, looks like it says it's ready. And... Um, you can leave them in the very back in case somebody comes in. Thank you so very much. And the reason why we're going to be doing that with the tracks is because, um, you know, it's as we've done research into the field as we go out and do missionary work, one of the things we're finding out is that giving out books is much more challenging because people don't read the same as they used to read. People still read. You know, but they don't read. And so we're finding that if you want to get the gospel out, if you give it in like anybody in here know what a YouTube short is. My sister's good to see you. You know what a Facebook uh, reel is or an Instagram reel, right? TikTok. The reason why these things have taken off is because people's attention span has gone from this to this. And so if you're not able to get in and get the attention span, they even have changed it. If you ever watch a, a scripted show on television or something like that, you'll see that they switch every second and a half. They're changing. You understand? And so, um, but there's a reason why. It's because the attention span of man has gone down dramatically. And so for those that are on, oops, I forgot. Sometimes I have family members. Listen, I have family members that don't go to our church, but they will watch our messages if I will post them, on, if I will go on live on Facebook. And so I'm going to go ahead and just put that on there. And all right. So again, for those that are watching, I am Pastor Smith. Uh, if you're watching on Zoom or YouTube or if you just joined us your first time. And I'm so very grateful for you to be here and to worship and to study with us. My dear sister, I am so glad to see you. God is so good to us and my brother as well. But for all of us, would you kneel with me as we have a word of prayer? Father in heaven, thank you again for the word of God and thank you again for the opportunities that we are given by that word. So please, Lord, be with us, I pray. And thank you for your loving kindness. And Lord, we just surrender. Lord, today we want to know what are the privileges of being a member of the church of the firstborn in heaven. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> so, sometimes 
We as Christians, especially those of us that are Seventh-day Adventists, we can be what's called catastrophists. You know what a catastrophist is? No, not causing catastrophe, but all we see is catastrophe. Yep. Yep. We only focus on the bad. And we focus on it so much that we become sour lemons in Christianity. Now, it's true. We have to tell the message. And if the message is, has a sour side, then we have to share it. But the message of Christ always has love and beauty Go with me in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. It's on, that, it's on that handout I just gave you on the inside. 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. I want to show you something that I think is amazing. 1 Corinthians 13, and, and we're going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians 13. Look what it says in verse 1. Okay? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of what else? Angels. And have not charity, I am becoming sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Now the word charity, the, it's the word agape in the Greek. Listen, I'm not the kind of pastor that goes into all the Greek and the Hebrew. You know why? It's not necessary. You know why it's not necessary? Because in order to be saved... You don't have to understand Greek and Hebrew. And the majority of people that do are not going to be saved. Now, why do I say that? What, would, what were the, anybody remember what was above Jesus' head on the cross? There were three, three things that was written in three different languages. Greek, Hebrew, and, and Latin. Why? Because the Greek mind was against Jesus. The Hebrew mind was against Jesus. It was the church that brought Jesus to the Romans to have him killed. And the Latin mind is against Jesus. These are all fallen minds. The only mind that is not against Christ is the word of God. And it doesn't matter what it comes in, because when God speaks, he's speaking to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. He's not just speaking to the people who understand Hebrew. That's why when you want to understand God, don't try to go to study the Hebrew. Study the character of Jesus. No man cometh unto the Father, but by what? And Jesus says he's the alphabet of God. He says in Revelation chapter 1, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek. Omega is the last letter of the Greek. He's not saying I'm the alphabet. I'm the word of God made flesh. John 1, 14, the word was made flesh and did what? Dwelt among us. The word of God needs to be more than paper and, and ink. The word of God must be life. It must be who we are. And that's why today, as I talk about this, I'm going to go through more of what we studied earlier this morning. Of these three laws. And they are laws. If you do not have, it's because you did, you did not do. And if you did not do, it's because you were not it. You have to be that person. And so the privilege, he says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am what? Become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You know what? I'm just making noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand how many mysteries, all mysteries, and though I have all knowledge and, and though I have all and though I have all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, you know what it profits me? Nothing. nothing. Why? Because charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. And that's the point. When you let love in, you will identify with love 
and you will do what love does. And that's what God's trying to get us to do, to do what love does. Then we won't see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Then we won't know in part, but we'll be known, even, we'll know as even as we are known. So, I did want to remind you, we have some guest speakers that are coming, and I, I want to pause here and just let you know, okay? These special guest speakers, Dr. Corns is supposed to be here next weekend. I'm not sure he will be, because we had a, a discussion the other day, and there are challenges that are going on. He's coming, but if not next weekend, we're Christians, right? Will it be okay? It'll be okay. But we were looking forward to it, and I told him, I said, brother, my heart. And he said, you know, brother, I'm going to do my best. And so, Dr. Corns is coming. Pastor Perch will be here next month. Um, and Maimon, I talked to him. He said, brother, I'm Brother Tracy, I'm coming. He goes, I, I was just in England, and, and then I was in Canada, and I was in the, in, in the islands. And, and brother, I, I, I want to retire. But he goes, well, brother, I, I will come. And so, but before him, make his, uh, his, his son, Zebulun, may be here. I didn't put his picture up. And so anyway, I just wanted to let you know those things. All right, so, your heavenly membership will bring you something amazing. It's called earthly privileges. Now, look at that man. Look at that man. That man looked good, right? He got guns on him. You know how he got all those guns? Chicken? Nah. What? Beef? Nah. He ate what the chickens ate. He ate what the cows ate. But we're going to talk about those privileges that are yours. Because there are privileges to being a Christian. All right. Previously, last week especially, we talked about uh, the family of God. And, and we talked about why you should join the family of God. And, and this is my additional, additional uh, effort to encourage you to not only join the family, but stay in the family. Don't be like me when I was 14. I was 14. I had a friend. And see, I grew up black. And, and that means something different. If you're black, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. But I grew up black, and so when you're black, and, and I told you about how my mom was hard, I didn't know how I didn't have a natural dad. I'd, he was not around, my father. And so my mom had to do things in order to teach me lessons I couldn't learn because I was hard-headed. Like the time she left me at Kmart, because I said, she said, it's time to go. I said, I'll come when I, basically when I'm ready. I'm playing in the toys. And then she left me, and we lived 10 miles away, Fairfield, California, to Vacaville, California. And my mom went home, and when I went up to go find her, she was gone. And I called, I said, can I, can I use your phone and call my mom? And my mom, I answered, called, and my mom answered the phone at home. And she said, I told you it was time to go. And so I had to walk the 10 miles alongside the freeway, 10 years old, all the way home. See, that's what it means growing up. Well, at least for me, you know, I, many black people are, are soft now. They don't, they didn't have this kind of, they didn't have a mama like that. You know, but, but, uh, but I've had this other one. There's something else happening when I was 14. Cause you know, I, I said, I'm hard headed, right? See, grace abounds. Angels are real because they saved me from stupidity. I had a lot of it. Like the majority of my head was full of stupid. Okay. So I was 14 and I had a best friend and, and he was white. The kind of kid that yells at her parents. You know, I don't know if you guys know anybody like that. And so he, he told me, he said, he saw how, how, my, how my family was. He's like, you know what? You should run away. I was 14. He said, you should run away. I said, really? He goes, yeah, that'll teach him. So you threaten to run away, you run away. Then when you come back, they'll treat you better. I said, really? He said, yeah. Matter of fact, you can come run away. You can stay in the camper, my dad's camper in the backyard. I'll feed you. I'll bring you food. So I ran away when I was 14. I ran away and I was in a camper in the back and, and I, I had all the comic books and all the magazines and, and there was no iPhones or nothing like that back in those days. And so, and so I remember after about a week, I was bored. I'd read all the comic books. I would looked at all the magazines and I said, I'm, I'm homesick. I want to go home. So I came home. I only lived like, you know, a few blocks away. I came home and I went up because I was a kid. I didn't have a key. You don't give your child a key because they think they can go when they want to go. So my parents didn't give me a key. And so I came up to the house and I knocked on the door. 
And my dad, he wasn't married to my mom yet, but he was at the house. My dad answered the door. He answered the door and said, hello? I said, hey, dad. He goes, what do you want? I said, can I come in? He goes, ooh, you don't live here anymore. I said, what? He said, you moved out. I said, what? I said, can I come in? Can I home? come home? He goes, hold on. Let me see. Shut the door. Went in the house. I'm standing out there. I'm sweating bullets. I'm sweating bullets because my friend's advice is not working out. This is not what he promised me. And so I'm in there and, and my dad came back and he goes, mm. we voted and it was a tie vote. Two against two. My mom and my dad versus my brother and my sister. He goes, hold on, we're going to have another vote. See if we can try to convince them to not let you come back in. Hold on, click. Shut the door. He came back. He goes, your brother and your sister won't budge and we don't understand it. We try to remind them of all the times you hit them and all the times you mistreated them and all the bad things you did. But they keep voting for you. And because it's a tie, you can come home. But, you know, you need to thank your brother and sister. See. There are lessons I learned as a child that I'm really grateful for. I'm grateful to be in a family because I could be out there all alone. But see, the family of God, I want to encourage you to join it and not just join. Listen, you can get kicked out. Don't leave and try to come back and be like those foolish virgins talking about... And the Lord opened the door and looked and said, it's the same thing my dad said to me, but he's not going to let him in. We talked about renewing our strength like the eagle. Oops. We talked about the living water of Jesus Christ. We talked about how, why it is drinking water is not good enough. You need to have, I, we talked about having, I, oh, I think I have it over here. I talked to you about that Celtic salt with all those natural minerals that God has put in it and how you should take at least one, if not a couple, and put them on your tongue. Let them dissolve and then drink your water, because the problem is, is that we don't have the ability to take in the good stuff. And so we talked about salt and water. And we talked about how Jesus is the fountain, the water of life. But today, your heavenly membership, when you join heaven, it's going to bring you some earthly privileges. And some of us don't have the privileges or some of us think we have privileges, but we actually aren't members yet. You know, it's a membership you got to keep up. It's not a membership you join and then you that's it. You're in for, for life. No, no, no. It's a membership you have to maintain. All right. There are privileges to, to, for those who join, excuse me, or those who are in God's family. All right. There are, some of them are natural. You have natural privileges. Some of them are physical. You get physical privileges when you join God's family. The Bible says that he teaches our hands to fight and our fingers to war. And I might have mixed that one up. He teaches us how to bend a bow of steel in our hands. You know the Bible says that you can bend steel? You, you can look it up. Type in steel in your Bible. And in your, in your little, in your phone. You can bend steel. The Bible says God will teach you how. Alright? There are mental privileges. You don't have to be stressed out. Worrying about the bills. Worrying about the job, worrying about your paycheck, worrying about your sales, worrying about all that stuff. There are mental privileges. God says, my peace will I give you. Not as the world give it, do I give you. He said, I'm going to give you my peace. Mental privileges. And there are social privileges. The Bible says, God, when you join the family, you get angel friends. You get three angels. They're going to teach you about the gospel, but all the angels are going to be your friends. Why? Because you're friends with Jesus. They'll be friends with you. 
It's, it's one of those things that when you join, like, on, like a, when you join something, when you join and, and because of this person and they're your connection, then all of their friends become your friends. It's like getting married. I don't have any friends that my wife's not friends with. Anybody says they don't want my wife around, that's just like saying I can't be around. And that's how it is with Jesus. He said, wait, wait, wait. If, if he can't come in and I'm not coming in. Social privileges. And you know what else? This one here, there are financial privileges. I read this beautiful quote and it said, oh, we read it this morning in, the, in, the, in, our, in our Sabbath school book. The elder read it. It was one of the last quotes talking about how Jesus became poor for, our, for us that we might be, that he took on our poverty that we might take on his riches. And, you know, this is not just talking about mental riches and social riches and and gospel riches. It's talking about riches, riches. Every time God blessed someone in the Bible, it came with financial blessings. You know why? Because to be financially free is to have liberty. Anytime you want to enslave people, you make them subject where everything they have to get it from somebody else. That's that's how you make them a slave. Financial privileges. But more importantly, in order to have all of these, he gives us spiritual privileges. And the spiritual privileges are probably some of the greatest. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So my question to you, all of you and you and you. Do you want to be privileged? You know, a couple weeks ago or whenever it was I gave this talk, I, I said, you know what? The. I should call this talk on YouTube, The Blessings of White Privilege. Right? Because the Lord dwells in light that no man can approach to. And what color is that light? Is it dark? It's white. His light is white. His robe is white. I want some white privileges. I don't want to get them from the government. I don't want those kind of white privileges. I want the heavenly white privileges. I might go white privileges, the Lord's white privileges, part two on YouTube. And they said, oh, you might get your, your, can, your, your, your channel canceled. But I said, that's all right. We'll be all right. Put that on my handout. <laughs> white privileges. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to make a handout. White privileges. Oh, Lord. I'm not going to put our address on it, though. <laughs> all right. So today. Let's look at what um, the privileges in the family of God has, okay? So, the first thing we're going to talk about, we talked about this last week, but I'm going to go through this as a foundational thing, okay? I want to look at the law of adoption. And we're going to go through this because in order, if we have to join the family, does that mean we already belong to it? There are people that, you know, that they're getting sued because they're using this denomination's name. And so they're getting sued in court for using the name. And so they say, we want to join this other organization. But then they said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, you have to go through all this stuff. And they said, oh, you know what? I found a way to join without pain, without without all the things. You know what that's called? Theft. Jesus said, if any man climbs in another way, if he doesn't go through the door, he's a thief. And a robber. All right. So let's look at the law of adoption. In order to do that, the question is, is whose image was Adam created in? Anybody know? All right. Look at the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So whose image was, was Adam created in? He was created in God's image. Adam, at creation, was created in the image of God. And so Adam was a much larger man than we are now. He wasn't like you and I. Down here. This is us right here. The ankle biters. We are the, well, the, po the Pomeranians of humanity. You guys, anybody here ever seen a Pomeranian? Right? What's, a, what's another little dog that's, that's like a Pomeranian? A Chihuahua. The ankle biters, right? We're Earth's ankle biters now. That's you and me. I don't care if you're six foot six. 
we're still the ankle biters. If Adam at his creation was nearly 20 feet tall, and I'm just barely over whatever. We're the Pomeranians. Actually, I'm the Shih Tzu of, of, of creation because I think they're the sweetest, most lovely little dogs. Anyway, see, after the fall of Adam, here's what the Bible says. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother do what? She wasn't thinking about God when she got pregnant. I was going to say something else, but thank you, Lord. Genesis 5, 3. And Adam lived in 130 years and begat a son in his own what, everyone? Likeness after his own what? Image. And he called his name Seth. See, we originally were in the image of God. But because of sin, it changed our image. And therefore, it changed our... Our being. So now instead of having God as being forefront in our minds and, and thinking thoughts like God thinks and, and doing things like God does and having the things that God has given, then God took away. Listen, when God, when man lost the image of God, God took away his home. He took away his property. Because he could no longer maintain it, the activity. Because now he had changed his identity. So, Adam created a son or had a son, begat a son in his own likeness after his image. And he called his name Seth. And there we go, we have Seth right there. And, and down his line was Methuselah. And, and Methuselah, you know, he lived long. He, he, he is pretty, pretty, pretty mighty. But he still only lived not quite 970 years. No, Adam lived 930, Seth 912. Uh, Noah lived 950. But it, the, the, from the 600th year down, it was stress. So. Because of that. Instead of having God as our father. We got a new father. Now, some of us act like our daddy wasn't the devil. But sons and daughters, in order to be adopted, you have to come from another family. And the family that all of us... Listen, if you're good at lying, cheating, stealing, if you're good at being sneaky, if you're good at, 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 at tricking people, if you're, if you're good at all these things, I have family and friends... I have little ones that I know, they're naturally good at just taking stuff and like you don't know where it went. Like, where is it? That's because things we picked up from our father, the devil. But look what the Lord said, talking about the church folk. Ye are of your father who? The devil and the lust of your father will you do. He was a what? Murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. When I was little, I represented my father, the devil. I was called to come join the family of God, but I hadn't joined. And even when I did join, I recognized I still had traits back from that old family that I hadn't given up yet. See, Jesus the Christ, he was subject to the law of heredity. See, naturally, he came from this family. Go with me in your Bible, the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. Hebrews, chapter 2. I want you to understand something. Hebrews, chapter 2, and we're going to go to verse 14. Hebrews 2, verse 14, the Bible says, For as much as the children are partakers of what everyone? Flesh and blood, he also... Himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest." 
in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For that in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. That means he's able to help us. See, Jesus got our physic physicality. He got all the disadvantages of being born after the fall. But because his daddy, his father was God, and he was God's only begotten son in the flesh, it says, it says, Jesus is the son of God. And this is why it says this in John 3, 16. For God so did what? Love the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, but have everlasting life. So that means that if he had not given Christ, we were going to perish. There was no, there was nothing we could have done to save ourselves. You know that old saying, pull yourself up by, the, by your own brute straps? That's a lie. Because all of us need help. You know why, you know why edu education as it is right now in America is so wicked and evil? Because you know, what they, you know they, they don't teach you the real secrets to success. You know what the secret to success is? You don't have to do it all on your own. You got to sit there and take the test on your own. You got to memorize everything on your own. You can't do every, you, you can't get help. In the world, you have collaborations. The Bible says two are better than what? One. When I was, when I was doing some of my science classes in, in high school, they gave us partners. They said, because you need to learn and work together. That's what we did in, our, in the scientists. But in math class, no. In English class, no. But when I study with my friend, I did better on the test. Do you know that in Berkeley, there is a, a math teacher, a math professor, not teacher. He's a math professor. Was it Berkeley or Stanford? It might have been Berkeley. I'm not sure. It was one of those. I want to say it's Berkeley. He said he had, he had all these different students, right? And he said, he said he noticed that the Asian students were acing the test, but that the, the black students were failing out of his class. And he said, I don't know what's going on. And so he asked the black students, he said, can I, can I come and follow you around for a while? And so for about two weeks, he watched them. He, he just studied them. And he said, huh, it's interesting because they're not different. They're not dumber than the others because, because they, they even study harder. They study longer, but they do worse on the test. He said he noticed that the Asian students all studied together in a group. But the black students all studied on their own individually. And so then he said, you know what? He made it a requirement in his class. Listen, from now on, everyone has, must study in groups. They are not allowed. You know what happened? All the grades went up the same. You know, that's a lesson from heaven. God said it's not good that the man should be what? Why? Because if he falls, who's going to help him? We need each other's help. And this is the thing. You go to school. This is why I would not. Listen, if I was a parent living right now, and I am. My children wouldn't go to public school. It would disadvantage them from life. They wouldn't learn how to balance a checkbook. They wouldn't learn real math. They wouldn't learn the law of 72. Anybody here learn the law of 72 when you were in high school? You learned it in college? Nope. The law of 72 tells you how long before your money will double if it's in an institution. That's pretty important stuff, right? If you're trying to save money for retirement. School as it is now just teach you how to be a good employee. They're not teaching you how to be a master of your experience. The Bible says, John 1, 18, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, hath declared him. John, 1 John 4, 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into where? The world that we might do what? Live how? Not live of ourselves, but live through him. So Jesus the Christ was subject to the law of heredity. But just like you and I, after the fall, just like you and I, 
But now let's look at the fact that Jesus, the Son of Man, he brings to us special things. Watch, Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do, ye, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He said, I am the Son of Man. I'm just not the Son of God. I'm one with you. Who do they say I am? Matthew 17, 19. Verse 9, excuse me. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be what? So wait a second. We just found out why Jesus was made a man. So that he could die. Till the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. He was stating he was going to die. Why did he become a man? Why did he become flesh? So he could die. Why? Because we're subject to death. Matthew 18, 11, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was what? And what was lost? What was lost, saints? Everything. We lost our mind. And when we lost our mind, we started doing things that would bring destruction upon us. Lying and cheating and stealing, all of these things... They bring death. And we started having major outcomes. But we are adopted into the family of God. And this adoption, this is the thing. Romans 8.15, look what the Bible says in Romans 8.15. For ye have not received the spirit of what, everyone? Bondage again to fear... But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. So watch this now. If you don't have the spirit of adoption, what spirit do you have according to this scripture? You have the spirit of what? Slavery. You think like a slave, so you act like a slave, and you have what slaves have. Destruction. Destruction. Look what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow what? Citizens with who else? The saints and of the household of what? Can you imagine? I want you to think about this. Imagine if God lived at your house. If you could see God, if he lived at your house, what would your house be like? What would it be like? Some people think it would be like, oh, I'm scared to do anything. I'm going to die. Really? Is that what God is like? The Bible says that, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to, to himself. So whenever you see Christ, who do you see? Look at what the Bible says. Go with me in your Bible, the book of John, chapter 20. John 20, I believe. Let me make sure I got the text right. John 20. Oh, I'm not thinking of the right text. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. John 20. And we're going to go to verse 19. Okay. The Bible says, John 20, verse 19 then the same day at even, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for what, everyone? What were they assembled for? So what spirit did they have? They had the spirit of what? Bondage. For fear of the Jews uh, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them what? Anybody there in their Bibles? In verse 22, what did he tell them to receive? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Why? Because when you have the spirit of adoption, you're going to have the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Holy Ghost. 
and you will not be afraid. And you will be of the household of God with and fellow citizens with the saints. You're not going to be strangers and foreigners anymore. Romans 8, 9. Look what the Bible says. But ye are not in the flesh. You're not in the what? In the flesh. But in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is what, everyone? He is what? Do we believe the Bible? So what is our greatest need? Our greatest need is to make sure that we're in Christ and that we have his spirit. We need to check to see whose identity do we hold? The other day I did something and I said, oh, I'm so stupid. And then I was reminded, no, you are not stupid, but you have done something stupid. And therefore, that is, your identity is not stupid. If I tell myself I'm stupid, you know what? It's going to make me stupid. Do you know that's why you and I have two ears and one mouth? It is less about what you say to others and more about what you say about yourself to yourself. You can convince yourself of evil just by speaking it. Because you hear what you say and it goes inside and your subconscious mind writes it down as law. She doesn't believe she's good at math. So guess what? Listen, everybody, all the math team, you guys are all fired. Because she said she's not good at math. You, you're not fired anymore. I'm sorry. You guys go away. And all the cells in your brain that would help you to be good at math, they just turn off. They say, well, focus on something else. You understand? See, that's why affirmations, people do use affirmations. I'm not really big in affirmations unless the affirmation comes from the word of God. If God says it is, well, you know what? I'm like, listen, I'm a fellow citizen so I can walk around like I belong to heaven. I try to dress like it. I think they look good in heaven, so I try to look good. I don't know how many people got froze in heaven, but I'm like, they, I'm going to bring a nice fro when I get there. How do you get, or rather, how do you have the spirit? Now, we talked about this last week, and I'm just going to go through this very quickly, right? John 14, 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth what? With you. And what does he, what does he want to be? He wants to be in you. So there is a difference because see, you can be in the family, but not have the spirit in you. You can be born in the family. You can be raised in, in a Christian household. You can come from a Christian nation like America. But just because you're born American, does that mean you're going to think like an American? We half the country is trying to go to communism. And the people who left communism that came to America are like, are you guys stupid? Do you not know what we sacrificed to get here? This is the last place to go. If you guys mess up, where are we going to go? Um, heaven. The world cannot receive him. Why? Because they can't do what? See him. All right. So here are some other scriptures. You can read these on your thing. I'm just going to move forward for time. OK. The Holy Spirit is is a promised gift. Yes. But I want you to understand this is something where I want to go to here. I want to show you some of these earthly privileges. OK. You see this man right here. His name was Dr. Kerry Reams. What was his name? You can look it up. His name was Dr. Kerry Reams. OK. And he was an old man in the 1970s when this picture was taken. He became a farmer and as a farmer, he, because he was one that, that was uh, in the same time period as, um, what's the name of that man with the funny hair and the Einstein, that's right. He was, he was in the same time period. So he went to a lecture where Einstein was and, and he heard Einstein talk about the power in the atom, the power they could release it in and that it could have, uh, they could end up with atomic and or nuclear weapons. They called it atomic because they were splitting the atom. And so he asked to act, uh, Dr. Einstein, he said, he said, Dr. Einstein, you talked about releasing the energy, but how do you put it back? And Einstein looked at him and said, I'm going to leave you to solve that problem. 
And so Dr. Kerry Reams went about to do it. And the first place he started was with the soil. He said, listen, what if we could put the minerals and nutrients back in the soil, then maybe that would make the plants healthy, and then that would make the fruit healthy, you know, the, the things that are grown of it, and then when men ate it, they would be healthy. And so that's what he did. So one year, I think it was Kerry Reams, making sure it's not all bright, but one year, grew a watermelon, massive watermelon, massive watermelon, took it to the state fair, entered it in the state fair, won first prize. Brought the watermelon home, set it down, left it there for a year. The next year, took the same watermelon back to the state fair and won a first prize again. Picked it up, took it back home, set it down, left it there for another year. The third year, he took that watermelon back to the state fair, won first prize again. How many times did he won first prize for the same watermelon? Three years in a row. Then he took it home, cut it, and ate it. That's what he was talking about putting the power back. You and I, even with refrigeration, we got food that goes bad in the refrigerator. And don't buy organic. You better eat that stuff the same day or the next day. It'll mold up quick. Earthly privileges. So here is the, 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 the corn that I grew, and that's the okra that I grew, that I planted myself there in Tennessee, excuse me, in North Carolina. That's my friend Sung Ju. And so the, the, the point about this, because I'm transitioning, I'm talking about what are the privileges of being in the family of God and how your heavenly membership opens up for you some earthly benefits. And here are some of them. First, on earth, we need to understand that every cell has needs. They all need oxygen. They all need water. They all need nutrients lots of nutrients, especially nutrients, trace minerals. They need to be able to remove waste and they need freedom from toxins. Okay. And the reason because the cells don't get this is why you have this degeneration because you have cell death. And when the cells die and then they, you know, when the cells are weakened or co compromised, the telomeres, they're compromised, they shorten, then they shorten the life. This is scientific. We could talk more about that. Okay? Because man lost its power. And so the question is, is Lord, how are you going to put power back? Well, the formula is sick soil causes sick plants and sick plants cause sick people. You understand that's, that's what's happening, right? And then you could be like the members of my family who who don't want to eat even fresh fruits and vegetables. We're not even eating plants. We're eating a plant after somebody stepped on it and then rubbed on it and then, then, then gathered it up into something and milled it up and changed the color and baked it and then did whatever else. And we get it from, you know, Murder King or, you know, or whatever it is. Golden Babylon of arches. And so we'll see. That because all these nutrients, phosphorus, selenium, copper, magnesium, cobalt, calcium, zinc, and iron, because the, the agriculture, the soil is getting bad because of mechaniz mechanization and, and they're putting on these, all these uh, ammonium uh, nitrate fertilizers and then they started putting on pesticides and everything started going down and then sickness started doing what? Skyrocketing. There's cancer, obesity, there's asthma. Bone deformities, heart conditions, diabetes, arthritis. Why? Because it says God endowed man with so great vital force that he has withstood the accumulation of disease brought upon the race and consequence to perverted habits and has continued for 6000 years. This fact of itself is enough to evidence to us the strength and electrical energy that God gave to man at his creation. It took more than 2,000 years of crime and indulgence of base passions to bring bodily disease upon the race to any great extent. If Adam and his creation had not been endowed with 20 times as much vital force as men now have, the race with their present habits of living in violation of natural law would have become extinct. At the time of Christ's first advent, that's 4,000 years, the race had degenerated so rapidly 
that an accumulation of disease pressed upon that generation, bringing in a tide of woe and a weight of misery inexpressible. That was 2,000 years ago. How are we doing now? We find out that vital force equals strength and electrical energy. All right. Okay. So then now our supposition is, my supposition is, is healthy soil will produce healthy plants. You know what healthy plants will, will produce? Healthy people. You want to be a man like this? I want guns like this. I don't know about you. They look pretty good. Look at them thighs. Look at them calves. I got calves like that, but man, I'm not sure. I'm missing some other parts. I, I think I'm missing that, those things right there. My wife, I got dad bod a little bit. I want, I want some of that bod. My wife says she doesn't, want, she doesn't want a six pack, but you know, tight. All right. So we talked about this before, the difference between 100 times and 100 fold, that's very different. It's, and we talked about the, the thing where you can take here and, and you just fold, you take a piece of paper and you fold it. And I'm not going to go through this because we've already talked about it. You can just take this and you can fold it in half and it doubles. And what happens is, if you fold it, it's going to be two, right? You fold it again, four. Fold it again, eight. Right? So three folds equal eight. You're at 800%. Now, if you do it 27 more times, you're at 1,073,701,824%. All right? If you folded it up to 60 times, you would have... One quintillion, one hundred and fifty one quadrillion, nine hundred and seventy three trillion, one twenty one billion, seventy three million, eight hundred and eighty nine thousand, two hundred and sixteen percent. Which is slightly more than double thirty fold. If you went to a hundred fold what Jesus promised. You would have one non million. Anybody ever, ever heard of the number non million? Me either. Non million, 201 octillion, four, 64 septillion, 75, 595 sextillion, 207 quintillion, 167 quadrillion, 684 trillion, 882 billion, 431 million, 343,616 percent. Go with me in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew, chapter 13. There are privileges that are untapped amongst us as a people. Matthew 13, as we prepare to bring this to a close. Matthew 13. I want you to see something. See, prayer means things. Okay? Matthew 13. The Bible says in verse 1, that same day... Jesus uh, went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. Drop down after he talked about these different seeds, the two different kinds of soils and the six different types of seeds. And it says in verse seven, and some fell among thorns and the and and, and the and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth some in hundredfold, some sixtyfold and some thirtyfold. What's God's first principle? Does he start with a 30? He start with a 30? No. He starts with a hundred. Then he said, OK, 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 maybe 60. All right, all right, all right. All right at the last, at the least, you're going to be thirtyfold. See, God wants to change our identity. See, when I was working that, that, that soil there, and, and when I was working, and I didn't know the farmer was taking this picture, when I was working that soil, I didn't know that God was changing my identity. But when he changed my identity, it changed my activity. When I became a farmer, I said, oh, I came here to learn how to farm. He told me, I want you to clear this field of all the rocks your, your size, your fist are bigger. 
And I'm walking around with an attitude, and you've heard me say it before, I'm walking around with an attitude, picking up rocks, I didn't come here to pick up no rocks, I came here to learn how to farm. And the Lord said, this field is your heart. And the rocks are your defects. He was trying to change my identity. And when he showed me that my identity was the problem, I accepted the change. And as soon as I accepted the change, immediately my activity changed. I started picking up rocks like crazy. I'm picking up this rock and that rock, and I picked up so many rocks. And you've seen that pile of rocks? That pile of rocks was massive. There's the pile that he did. Or is that the wood? I'm not sure. There's a pile. But you know what? I cleared that field, brothers and sisters. Because I changed my identity. And when my identity changed, I changed my activity. And now look at all. And then there, I had that pile of rocks. He said it was more rocks than they had gathered in the whole 30 plus years they'd been there. Because my activity changed. Because my identity changed. And when that changed, my property changed. Not gonna do. See, sorry, saints. All right. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 26. The spirit of adoption. See, the spirit of adoption is very important. The Bible says in Isaiah 26, excuse me, in Genesis 26, and the Bible says in verse But I don't know what's going on with me today. I thought it was verse 11. Okay, there it is, verse 12. Thank you so much. Isaiah 26, verse 12, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year, and what, everyone? What did he receive? All right, here's my point. When you, have a, when you allow your identity to be the identity that God chose for you, then guess what? God will start do, dealing with you according to your identity that you identify with. And when your identity changes, now your activity will change. And so now he's going to give you a property change. If you try to get the property without having the identity, you're going to have a problem. And so we begin to reap what we sow. And he says, listen, not only did we have these rocks, we were able to build a road with those rocks. We we're able to grow this corn here and put it up for years. We we're able to grow this okra here. I hated okra. It's one, it's one of my favorite foods. Anybody in here ever have bindi before? It's, a, it's an Indian dish. When I went to India, oh, sorry, not India. When I went to Fiji and the, and the Indians were there, they made this food, this food out of, out of okra called bindi. And it is probably one of my favorite foods on the planet. Bindi. It's delicious. And it's okra, which most people think is nasty. Because it's all slimy, right? It's all slimy. It looks like snot. You know that snot's real good for you. You boil it, you won't like it. But so, so the farmer's wife, you know what she showed me? She goes, you know what you do, brother? She goes, you take it and you chop it up and you, put, you bread it and you put it in the oven, oven and you make little crunchy bits out of it. It was delicious. And he said, God said, I'm going to change your property after I've changed your identity and then your activity will follow. And now... What he did was he put, I put into the soil because he put into me. You catch that? When he put into me, I put into the soil. So this here, the identity put into activity and the activity here. And so when I changed, 
life changed. But that change wasn't just then. The change is supposed to be now. He's 5'10". We have corn that was 12 feet tall. 5'10". Twelve feet tall. Critters. And that's what our corn looked like. We grew on popcorn. We grew on our sweet corn. And that's why we had a problem. They came to, he came with, with about two dozen of his friends and family members. And they said, the food here is better than any other place we go. He couldn't knock over. See these corn stalks right here? They were so wide, listen to me, they were so wide that they couldn't knock them over. They were like little trees. They tried to climb them. They couldn't eat the corn. So how does God want to put his law in you? The way he wants to do it is with eight simple steps. And these eight simple steps... Each one of them has omnipotent power. And God wants to give you these because he wants you to have not only these laws of life that you might live and that you might have a hundredfold, but he wants to put a blessing on you and empower you in a way that you've never been empowered before. He wants you and I to be the strongest chihuahuas on the earth. He wants you and I to be the strongest Pomeranians on the earth. So when all the other giants are resurrected and they're all standing up there and they're all huge and, and, they're, all, and they're all looking down at us, they will admire us because we finished the work. We allowed our weakness to be made strength and we allowed our identities to be changed so that then we saw things the way God sees them. So then we trusted him. We breathe like him. We work like him. We shine like him. We rested when he rested. And out of us came and, uh, rivers of living water like comes out of him. We had temperance like him and we ate like he ate or eats. Because he will give you those things, these privileges. Do you want them? You don't get them from eating chicken. You don't get them from eating beef. You know what you get them from? Last verse, John, Job chapter 12. Is it 29, 12, Lord? Job 29, verse 12, I believe. Lord, I'm just messing up today. The Bible says in... Job 23, 12. Thank you. Sorry about that. Job 23, 12. And I apologize. Job 23, 12. The Bible says. Job 23, 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my what? Anybody there? More than my necessary food. Listen, I don't eat vegetarian I eat Jesus. I don't eat, you know, grapes. I eat the word of God. And if the word of God says there's a blessing in the grape, I'm going to eat the grape. If the word of God says that, that I should eat the herb of the field, I'm going to eat the herb of the field. If the word of God says that the leaves are the healing of the nations, well, I'm going to eat the leaves because I want to be healed. Because I believe I'm in his nation. And so... There's much more I was going to give you, but I'm going to stop there. Are there any questions? Raise your hand. Next Sabbath. Yes, sir. In the very back. Can I get the microphone, Pastor? Just raise your hand, please. Was the okra still slimy when you baked it? No, the slime was all gone away. Wow. 
<laughs> Listen to me. Jesus loves okra. Watch. See, when God fixes you, He doesn't just fix you on the outside, He fixes you on the inside. He wants you to have life. Every bit of life that you can have, He wants you to have all the privileges. He wants to take the natural privileges and make them yours. He wants to take the spiritual privileges and make them yours. He wants to take the power that he has put into nature and make it yours. Do you want it? That's the only question. I love fried chicken. Listen, I do. I love the smell. I love the taste. I love the texture. I grew up loving it. But the new man loves chickens more than he loves fried chicken. And I'd rather they run around and eat the bugs and feel safe at my house than for them to be on a plate. Because I, I say, as I say in my house, we don't eat our friends. See, once my identity changed and the, and the chickens became my friends, I don't eat my friends. I don't eat you. You come to my house, I don't eat you up. When you ain't around, I ain't talking about you either. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, many of these things have been shared. There's nothing new under the sun. But there are privileges, Lord, that you want us to have. And there are privileges we know we don't have because we're not exercising them. Or we don't know that we have them. And you want us to search out the height and the depth and the width of the width of the love of Christ and to find what are the privileges that belong to me as a son of the Most High, as a daughter of the King. And Lord, you want to give us these privileges. You want us to see them and to know them and to exercise them. You want us to call upon you so that you can show us great and mighty things that we know not. You want us, Father, to be strengthened you want our eyesight to be strengthened. You want our, our, our limbs to be strengthened. You want us to be strong. So that when we have to fight the lion, we can just defeat the lion. If we have to fight the bear, we can defeat the bear. And when we have to fight the giant, Lord, we're not afraid. Help us, Lord, because the lion, the bear, and, and, and the giant have joined forces. So, Lord, help us not to be afraid like a little chihuahua, but help us to be bold, even bold as the lion. Bless us now, I pray, and keep us, I pray. And may your grace fill us. And may we receive the spirit of adoption. And may we cry out, Father, Abba. God bless and thank you so much. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it's time for um, tithes and offerings. Uh, tithes and offerings are not collected during the service, but you may place your tithes and offerings in the back held by the deacon or deaconess when being ushered out. You may also deposit the tithes and offerings in any of the offering donation boxes. And our offering donation boxes are located in the back of the sanctuary, in the fire, in the foyer, um, in the main fellowship hall downstairs. Our pastor does not receive a salary, but only receives his portion of the tithes that you graciously give. You can give electronically through cash up, uh, dollar sign, his remnant church number one. You can also um, donate through PayPal, and that's his remnant church number one at gmail.com. Or you can also contact our treasurer, Sister Candace. Let's pray for our offering. Mm -hmm. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, today on your Sabbath day. Lord, thanking you for all the blessings, Lord, that you have, ble that you have blessed us, Lord, with. Lord, I pray that you will, um, Lord, that you will work upon our hearts, Lord, that we will graciously give and gladly give, dear Father, the portion that belongs to you. Lord, help us to trust you, Lord, and help us, oh Lord, to remember that everything is yours, Lord. We are just, um, we are, we are just stewards, Lord, of the things that you have given us. Lord, I pray that you will bless the offering that will be received. Lord, I pray that um, the things that need to be covered will be covered, dear Father. Lord, and that we will have the funds that we need to um, still keep this um, church open, dear Father. Please be with all of us here and help us, O oh Lord, to keep the rest of the Sabbath um, holy, Lord, as you want us to keep it. Please be with all, all of us, Lord, and all these things I ask. In the name of your Son, Jesus, amen. amen. We give thee but thine own, whatever it may be. All that we have is thine alone, I trust, O Lord, from thee. Now we will have our closing.